Psalms 145 says, I will exalt you, my God and King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day, I will praise you and exalt your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of, be, of his praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Awesome. What an amazing morning it is. You may be seated. Thanks for being here at Journey Ministries. I'm Pastor Dave, the lead pastor here at Journey, and I am so glad that you are joining us here in person. If you're joining us online, I'm so glad that you're joining us here. Also, make sure that you are interacting with the pastor that's online, and we are going to have an amazing time together this morning. One of the things we do here at Journey Ministries is we love people. We love community. And so the way we take care of our people, the way we take care of our community is through an act of worship that we call giving. And so giving is giving back to God. We call it tithe and offering. And giving back to God is just saying, God, we want to take care of your church. We want to take care of your people. We want to take care of the community that we live in. And so if you would be willing to give, great. If not, that's okay too. We believe this is between you and God as an act of worship. Will you pray with me quickly? God, again, we thank you for who you are. Lord, we thank you for the love that you show us each and every day. We thank you for the the weather that you have cleared, the beautiful blue sky, the grass that's around us. Lord, as we listen to the birds of the air, 
as we hear the rustling of the leaves, God, we give glory to you. God, I'm so thankful that we can join here together as the body of Christ, the church. That, Lord, all of our strengths can be used for your honor and for your glory. And for those that are sitting here and they don't understand who you are, Lord, Holy Spirit, speak to them. Help them to understand the saving power of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, spread your word throughout this community as the speakers, the, the words, the songs echo throughout the buildings of our community. As people ride their bikes by and drive with their windows open, Lord, Holy Spirit, again, I just ask that you will plant the seeds and you will continue conversation with them throughout the day. God, thank you for what we are about here to do here today with offering, with giving back to you. Give myself the lead pastor, the other staff, our Journey Ministries leadership team. Give us wisdom, Lord, on how best to use this money for your glory. God, we thank you. It's in your name I pray. Amen. If you do choose to give, you can go online right now on journeymen.org and you can fill out the um, connect card, but you can also click the giving tab. And in that giving tab, there's a drop down box that has uh, the different ways and methods that you can give in. There's also a blue tube right over here by the door that you can give in. And uh, we just encourage you to give as an act of worship. Will you stand with us and sing again, please?
You may be seated. We're starting a new series this week. Didn't uh, Caleb Jones, didn't he do an amazing job last week? If you were here watching online, he did an amazing job. I'm so happy that Caleb is part of our Journey Ministries family and he is willing to speak when he speaks. It's so good. We're starting a new series this week called Chasing Carrots. This is actually a devotion that I've been going through uh, personally, with, uh, not personally, but through my, with myself. It's a book that um, Craig Rochelle has developed and, and worked through a devotion, and it's a, uh, a chasing carrots. So think in your mind, um, just the idea of chasing carrots. You know, when it, I first came to mind, I was looking at my goats and thinking, this is like Gracie Mae holding a carrot and running, and the goat is chasing that carrot. This is the same thing, the same concept that we're trying to think about as we're chasing carrots. We're always thinking, we want more, we want that. Right? We're always chasing after that. And so for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at what we're chasing after and why we're chasing after that. But first, as we start into this whole chasing carrots a couple of weeks here, we're, we're going to look at this passage from Scripture. We're going to look at it each week and we're going to just kind of study it together. And I'm going to encourage you and challenge you to scu- study it throughout the week. In fact, I'm going to put some ideas and some thoughts and some devotions on the Facebook page and on our website for you to follow along with throughout the week. We don't want to just to stop here on Sunday morning. Well, the Journey Ministries leadership team and myself, we've been really challenged that there's 167 other hours this week that we can be working on. And we should be following Christ and becoming more like Jesus each and every day, not just here on Sunday mornings. And so this is what we're going to be looking at for the next couple weeks is Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. And we're going to be seeing what's happening here. As I read this, what I would like you to do is this. Maybe you want to close your eyes and imagine Jesus saying these words. Maybe you want to listen to the, the birds of the air, feel the wind, the breeze ca- crossing uh, across you, li- listening to the rustling of the, of the leaves, but just thinking and putting yourself into Jesus' teachings. You're sitting at Jesus' teachings right now. You're listening to him speak. If you need to close your eyes, and it says this, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Verse 22, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in, the, in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Verse 24, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Let's pray together. God, Holy Spirit, use the words that I'm about to speak. Use me, Lord, as as a tool by you. Lord, I ask that you will soften hearts and soften minds, that you will open up ears and help people to see the truth of who you are. God, help us to chase after you every single moment of every single day. God, we thank you that you are here within us, that you are here within Journey Ministries, and you're speaking to us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the whole idea behind this is chasing carrots, chasing after that. It's the pursuit of more. If I could just get a little more of that, then life would be good. If I could just get a little bit more of that, then life would be better. If I could just get a little more of that. Oh, wait. But but look at that over there. If I could just get a little bit more of of that over there, then that would satisfy my needs. And that is all that I would need. And and that would change my life. And, And whoever chased after that, then that is more. And then we're going to want that. And we've all been here, right? We've been chasing after that all of our life. Ever since we've been kids, we've been chasing after something more that. We've all done it. Because we believe that if we chase after that, if we put that into our life, our life is going to be better. If I put that into my life, my life is going to be good. And today we're going to be talking about that, which is fame. Me. The desires that I have. Craig Rochelle, he said, he said this. He said, chasing... Fame is going after something that belongs to God instead of going after God himself. 
you guys hear that? Chasing fame is going after something that belongs to God instead of going after God himself. Fame, this is great timing in our culture, isn't it? Turn on the TV and look at the news and look at the fame that everybody wants. We have politicians, we have athletes, we have actors, we have musicians. They're all chasing after this fame and they're doing whatever they have to do to get this fame and they're chasing after it and they're saying, if I could just get a little bit more of that and if you're paying attention at all to any of the things that are going on within the, uh, the news, we're seeing that those that are chasing after that fame, the athletes, the politicians, the, the actors, the musicians, what's happening is they're all crashing right now. Why? Because they're chasing after fame, something that belongs to God rather than chasing after God himself. And we're all in this point. We're all in this mark. We're all in this area. And we keep chasing after that. If only I could have that. If only I could have that. Maybe this will make me famous. If only I, if only I had these people that could listen and respond, then that would make life good. If only these people would watch what I'm doing, then that would help what I'm doing I want to be known, I want to be admired, I want to be liked, I want to be followed, I want to be accepted, I want to be famous. And I can see some of your faces as I'm looking around and some of you are saying, Dave, I don't struggle with this. I don't have an issue with trying to get that. I'm not worried about being famous, I'm not worried about having that. And if you're honest with yourself, you are. Craig Rochelle, he calls that the micro cravings of fame. What are some examples? The micro cravings of fame of, of when I put my post on Facebook and I hope that I get 17 likes or 117 likes. When I tell the joke that I tell hoping that people will laugh at work because I think that will put me elevated above everybody else because it's a joke that probably shouldn't be told or I'm laughing at a joke that shouldn't be told because I want to be just elevated just a little bit more. This micro cravings of fame ha happens when we, when we are at work and we, we think, I want everybody to know what I have done. I want them to know that I've served, that I've gave, that I've done that. This micro cravings of fame is saying that I have to be first, that I want to be liked, that I'm chasing after that. Back in the day when Deadpool the movie was coming out, I put a, a simple post as a youth pastor. I put a simple post uh, to parents just giving them some warnings and, and some ideas behind this movie Deadpool. And I, I got a like of that night and I was like, wow, that's really cool. And then another like and then a share and then another share. And within that hour, my post went viral. Like all over the world, it's been seen. People liking it, commenting it, sharing it. This Deadpool post of warning parents about what was taking place. It, it was a simple post, but it got shared so much that it was shared all over the world. It went viral. And as I saw that happening within this hour, I was like, hey, yep, I'm the youth pastor that posted that. And now people are trying to like me and comment with me and they're adding me to their friendship list. list. And, and I'm thinking, well, maybe I should start a YouTube channel and, and maybe I should go write a book. Maybe I should get some socks with my face on it. I, I'm thinking, this is what's going to make me important. This is what's making me the best youth pastor that I can actually be because I'm chasing after that. My intention wasn't to become famous or to have a, a shared Facebook post all over the world or become uh, to, to have this, um, this post shared. But that's what happened. And because of that, my, my attitude changed from, it's no longer about warning parents, but it was about how can I keep this going. I fell into sim t sin, temptation of chasing after that. My name was known. People were contacting me. They were friend requesting me. All of this attention was on me because of that one simple little post. If you don't think that you're chasing after that, or if you don't think your kids or your grandkids are chasing after that, Look at this social media thing called TikTok that's about ready to be banned here in the United States. TikTok is, is all about chasing after that for students, for younger crowds. Why? Because people are going viral on that for copying somebody else. They're chasing after that. Our young people are chasing after that. They're wanting to have that. Maybe you've committed everything. You've committed everything and you can't say no to something. Maybe as a, a person you're committing everything and you're, and you're saying, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this because 
in reality, you're saying yes to everything because you want to be liked, you want to be known, you want to be needed. And it's that micro cravings for fame. Maybe for you, it's, it's saying that I have to have credit for everything that I do. Or maybe for you, it's, it's chasing after the likes, the shares, the comments, the LOL faces. Maybe for you, it's chasing after the drama or the confrontation. All of us are chasing after that somehow. And all of us are trying to put ourselves above God somehow. And we're chasing after the thing that God created instead of chasing after God himself. If only I could get more of that, then more people would respond. More, if only I could get more of that, then I'd get more likes. If only I could get more of that, then more people would follow me. If I could get more of that, then more people would listen to me or see me or, or hear me or respond to me or, or have confrontation with me. So maybe you're still not convinced that you're chasing after that. Maybe this message isn't for you. Well, let me give you a couple statistics of why this is important. 10 to 12 year olds. A very moldable generation right now. 10 to 12 year olds, their number one goal right now is not financial peace. Their number one goal right now is not great relationships. Their number one goal right now is to be broadly known. If you don't believe me, look at YouTube. YouTube is what my 10 and 12 year olds are looking at and they're saying, I want to be like that. I want to, I have a desire to be like that person that I'm watching on the screen and they're chasing after that. 22 to 37 year olds, 50% of you have said that you believe a movie should be made about your life. 50% of you, 22 to 37 year olds. You think you're that important, that adventurous, that you should have a movie made after your life the uh, one in nine people, one in nine people, they say that they would give up their marriage if they would be seen and known better. My friends, generations, starting from the oldest generation all the way down, every single one of us is chasing after that. We're chasing after that, that needed and that known. We're chasing after those things. And be honest, all of us have been watching or have seen some type of reality TV show of Big Brother or Survivor or whatever you've seen of those things. And you're saying, if only I could be that person or if I, only I could be in that situation, this micro cravings for fame and it's caking over our lives. Now listen to me closely. Fame doing the best job that you can possibly do, being the top dog, being the best of the best, being known for what you do is not sin. Did you hear me? That is not sin. In fact, look at what happened to David. First Chronicles chapter 14, verse 16. And David did as, he, as God commanded him, and they struck down the Philistines' army from Gibeon to Gezer. And the fame of David went out into all of the land, and the Lord brought the fear of him upon all nations. Verse 11, God said to Sa Sa Solomon, I'm sorry, second, uh, let me actually stop right there. And David, as the God commanded, did what he was told to do, and the fame of David went out into all of the lands. You see, David was obedient to God, and God made him famous. Nothing is wrong with fame. Nothing is, is wrong with being liked. Nothing is wrong with being known but what is wrong and what's taking place, I think, in this world right now is we're chasing after fame instead of pointing people to Jesus. We're pointing people to ourselves rather than to God the Father. King Solomon, Second Chronicles verse, chapter 1, verse 11, God said to Solomon, because your greatest desire is to help your people and you did not ask for wealth, riches, fame, or even the death of your enemies or a long life, but rather you asked for wisdom and knowledge to properly govern my people, Verse 12, I will certainly give you the wisdom and knowledge you requested, but I will also give you wealth, riches, and fame, such as no other king has had before you or will ever have in the future. Because Solomon asked for wisdom, God gave him wealth and fame. Again, fame, being the best at what you possibly can be, is not sin. Pointing people to yourself rather than to God the Father, I believe, is sin. I can just feel that God comes up to me and says, Dave, what do you want? And my response was, I want my Deadpool post to go viral. And God just shakes his head and says, you're a dummy. Right? Jesus raised the dead. He healed the sick. He, he had a huge following. He spoke to thousands of people. Jesus was famous. 
but he pointed people back to the Savior of the world himself and God the Father. If I could just have a little bit more of that, then life would be good. Look what Jim Carrey actually said. This is a quote from him. He said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they dreamed of so they can see that it's not the answer. So what is the answer? As Christ followers, as Christians, what is the answer for us? Because yes, we want to be needed and known. We, we have this desire for people to like us and to respond to us. So what's the answer? And I think the answer comes really good from John the Baptist. John the Baptist, he's a cousin of Jesus. He's a prophet. He's a crazy man dressed in animal skin. He ate locusts and honey. and He created this large following of people and he spoke to people. People wanted his attention. He wanted to be in front of people to be able to speak. People wanted to follow him. But listen to what John's message was. John's message was, the Savior is coming. Repent and be rescued. It had nothing to do about John the Baptist. Yes, he had this famous following. People understood him. They liked him. But his message was, Jesus is coming. He is the Savior of the world. And he wants to rescue you. John the Baptist is famous. He pointed people to Jesus always. Why? Because Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the hope of the world. Look what John chapter 3 verse 30 says. He says, He, Jesus, must become greater and greater and I must become less and less. Jesus must become greater. It's not about me. It's not about the message I speak. It's not about the pictures I post. It's not about the stories I tell. It's not about the memes I share. It's, it's not about the jokes that I say. It's about Jesus. And the life is not about me. It's about Jesus. And until we figure that out, church, we're just going to keep gathering on Sunday morning and listen to some guy speak. And the world is not going to be changed because of us. The answer is Jesus. Stop making it about you. Stop making it about Dave. It's one of my biggest pet peeves is that people put me up on a pedestal because I'm a pastor. Stop it. It's about Jesus. Jesus is the hope of the world and he's the salvation for the, the dark, lost world. And yet we want the likes and the shares and the posts and the comments, and the disagreements, and the drama. Jesus is the answer. Craig Rochelle, in his book, he, he asked two questions. He said, who are you representing, and whose approval matters most? That's my challenge for you to answer today and for this week. Who are you personally representing? Is Dave representing the Deadpool post? Is Dave representing Journey Ministries? Is Dave representing my family? Or is Dave representing Jesus Christ? And whose approval am I seeking after most? Am I seeking after the approval of the school? Am I seeking after the approval of my boss, the JMLT? Am I seeking after the approval of you? Yes, of course I am. But it's about Jesus. Because Jesus is the hope of the world. The salvation for this dark, lost world. Band, would you come on back up, please? As we close with this, we need to think about what we're chasing after. Are we chasing after that? Are we chasing after even the micro fame? Are we chasing after Jesus? Because I'll tell you what, if we're chasing after that instead of Jesus, we're doing it wrong. As the band begins to play, I'm going to challenge you with the lyrics of this song that they're going to sing. And as Christ followers, what I want you to do is I want you to, to sit here and to listen to these, world, th these words and, and think about this world is not your home. I want you to think as Christ followers, I want you to think about your life is not even your own. If you don't understand or know who Jesus is, I'm going to be standing. I'll just stand right over here by the road. If you want to have a personal relationship with Jesus, if you've never had a relationship with Jesus, if you don't understand why you would have a personal relationship with Jesus, will you come and talk to me? If you're visiting online, just put in the comments, 
put in there, I want to know Jesus, and one of the staff members will contact you. This world is not our home, and this life is not about me. The answer is Jesus. Listen to these lyrics. It says this, Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, Hallelujah, praise and honor unto thee. It's not about me. Jesus is the hope of the world. God, we thank you for who you are. God, we thank you, Jesus, that you came to this rugged cross and you offered us salvation. We thank you that your love poured out over me, over this entire world, everybody. And so, Lord, as we sit here today and we ask those questions, whose approval are we seeking out? Who are we pointing back to? Help us to sing hallelujah, praise and honor unto thee. Because the answer is you, Jesus. You have offered us salvation that we didn't deserve, but you did it anyways, even though while we were still sinners, you died for us. Praise and honor unto thee. Even though I struggle with temptations, and I constantly chase after that praise and honor unto thee. Even though I tell the coarse jokes, I post the post to get the likes and the shares. I create drama and conflict. Hallelujah. Praise and honor unto thee. Even though we were still sinners. Hallelujah. Praise and honor unto thee. So Lord, as a leader, a spiritual leader, and as a Christ follower, as a leader of my family, help me to point people back to you. Take us off our pedestals, Lord. Why? Because all praise and honor unto thee. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The band's going to continue to sing. You can stay in worship. You can stay and pray. I'll be standing over there if you want to speak to me or if you're online, please post it online. Otherwise, enjoy the day, enjoy the weather, and give praise and honor unto Jesus Christ. Oh.
It's been paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the Son set free, oh, it's free indeed. Now my debt it's paid, it's been paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus filled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. When the sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, stone's been rolled away behold the empty tomb come on church